Tide Podcast. Here we go. Hello, hello. Around the block and around the world. Everywhere in between, this is where we discuss, debate, and deliberate all things diabetes. I'm glad you're here. Representing type 2 for Spanish, El Typo Doso. My name is Doby Maxwell, along uh, with type 1, representing proudly the vivacious, effervescent, always in the know, Ms. Sammy Parker. But first, before we get to Sammy, uh, today's episode of JMT is brought to you by the Diabetes App, a free social community app that brings together both type 1 and type 2 diabetics, plus their supporters, fine community resources, and an answer to all your problems, and Sammy and me on the Diabetes App. Sammy, today we're going to talk about an unpleasant topic to some <laughs> and a, uh, a fun topic. It's work. Diabetes in the workforce, baby. In the workforce. Yeah, you got to work to eat. If you don't eat, you don't live. If you don't live, you don't do anything. Oh, it's so scary, Debbie. <laughs> you push up daisies. That's what you do. Scary thought when you think about it. <laughs> Speaking of living, how's your blood sugar today? Blood sugar is doing pretty good. We are on the rise. We are on the up and coming. <laughs> Just what we like to hear. Good. Back to earth. Back to normal. Back to human. How are you doing? Did you go on your little daily walk? I did my big daily walk today. 11,766 steps before 9 a.m. So now the rest of the day is mine. So if I want to sit around like Jabba the Hutt and feed my face. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Yeah, I've been really getting into a habit. And it's because the show and hopefully our listeners are doing the same thing as they listen to Just My Type. They're out there walking, shaking their booty, sweating, yes. perspiring grunting, groaning, exactly. whatever it needs to get in shape. You know, it's really funny because now as we record this, I'm about six weeks in. I think it's 43 days, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it really has become a habit, a way of life. I don't I don't even think about it. I'm going to walk tomorrow. It's not if. And if I can do it, I think anybody can do it. Because speaking of, of workplace and jobs, I have about the weirdest job in the world as a comedian. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, we're all over the place. You can compare... We're all different, is my point. Every job is very different. Have you had jobs in your short life when you had to work <laughs> with uh, others? Yes, I have. It's difficult because a lot of my main job was dance teaching mm -hmm. because I grew up dancing. And then also, like in high school, I couldn't couldn't really work because I was dancing from like 2 o'clock to 8 o'clock at night. Right. And I'm lucky my parents kind of believed that if we were like in something committed or an extracurricular that was like a commitment that wasn't really an option to work in a way because it wasn't room for both. But I got lucky with that with my parents. I wish we were related, Sammy. I wish I could be in your family. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that that's not the norm. But I, yeah, so I've been teaching dance now for like three years, four years. Mm -hmm. And um, I love it. It definitely has its challenges at times with diabetes because dance causes an increase in blood sugars. Sometimes from like stress or like adrenaline and all of that. And so that can be complicated, but I definitely, there's a lot of pros and cons and I've heard a lot involving different kinds of jobs and diabetes. So I think that's, mine is more like from hearsay rather than live by. <laughs> okay. Now let me ask you this. Do you happen to have other people, like a, an infrastructure at your job? Do you just teach the dance or do you have people you have to answer to, or are you in charge of people? How does it work where you? So I own her at the dance mm -hmm. studio and then she kind of tells me what days I come in. And then when I come in, like today I'll be there from six to eight and I'm going to do like a bar class, which is like a workout class basically. And then I'm going to also teach them a combo. But I have full reign for those two hours. Basically. So you're in charge, basically. Yes. Yeah, for two hours. Okay, well, yes. I think a lot of listeners are not in charge in their jobs. And there might be yeah. an office situation. During COVID, I had to work at a store. So I was in a pretty much corporate environment. And there were a lot of nice people, very diverse, very different. They knew I had diabetes. And uh, some were cognizant of it and cared. And other people, again, they were like, oh, you can't eat this. You can't have that. Are you yep. okay? So how do you think a person in their job, what, what are some hints that we can give them to better get by because I know I learned the hard way. I didn't expect it. Well, before we dive into the tips, or not like tips, but I guess like things you should be aware of, I think something that's crazy to me is that there are jobs that you technically not are discriminated against, but I mean, I guess in a way, like to be a Navy SEAL, you are not qualified if you have diabetes. Hmm. And I think it's crazy. I mean, I will say, and probably I'm sure people would disagree with me. I understand why. I think if you're in a position that you are like, reliable at any point of any time to basically defend our country and your Navy SEAL and you're having like a low blood sugar. I mean, it sucks to say that it's, you don't qualify, but it wouldn't like if I, I wouldn't let myself, cause I would know if I had a higher low blood sugar, it's not for the 
the best for the country. <laughs> you don't think our enemies would understand that? Just excuse me before America attacks you and wipes out your whole. Hold on, before we uh, get into a fight here, I need to uh, check the blood sugar. Uh, one of our seals has got a little little blood sugar. Yeah, right and I, so I think it's understandable, but it is wild when you think about it. And I mean, I think that there's a fine line there between like actual jobs that it's not safe if it's actually somebody who has diabetes and they're. You know, because also you never know. Then somebody who is a SEAL and has diabetes could be like, I might have a low blood sugar, but I'm just going to push through. And then it's like, okay, well, you push through, but now your blood sugar is 10 and uh, you're not waking up. Yeah, you were in a swamp with alligators attacking you, but you gotta, you, you're checking your glucose. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I think with like the workforce, especially, there's a lot of like awareness that needs to be taken place with whatever job you're doing. And that's not just by yourself, but by all your co-workers or your boss, like there needs to be an awareness. Sammy, I think you're not only correct, I'm going to back that up even a little bit more and suggest you need to drop the bomb, the shiz, when you have your job interview before you even start. That's what I did at the grocery store. I said, look, I happen to have diabetes. I, these are some things mm -hmm. I need to do. I need to some, you know, eat well. And, and what did they say? They kind of step back a little bit. Oh, are you all right? Oh, because they're worried like, you know, you're going to need a, an oxygen tent or all these kind of things. But I just mm -hmm. think you need to open up the, the channels of discussion and be cool about it. I agree. You know, and if you're listening, you say, hey, there's this podcast you can listen to. It's called JMT. And, you know, Sammy and Dobie both have it. So if you have any questions, listen to them and they'll mm -hmm. hire us. Yeah, I think even in school, that goes for it too. Like I've always told every single professor I've had that I have diabetes. And just in case I ever like leave a room or I'm eating or something for them to not be freaked out, but I do have type 1 diabetes. And I think it's just an important thing to kind of like preface for different things, especially in the workplace. Something that is like interesting to me is somebody I know, nobody really knows they have diabetes except my sister's fiance because he saw him and he was like, obviously I have diabetes. So he was like, oh, he's diabetic. And then he asked him, was like, oh yeah, my, my sister, his fiance, um, her little sister has diabetes. But it's crazy to me that nobody really knew. And um, I think something that's so wild too about it is like with diabetes, you have a lot of high blood sugars or low blood sugars, which that allows a lot of room for absence or disability, mm -hmm. um, not excuses, but disability, I guess like you know, reasons for being out or not getting a good night's sleep because you were up every hour. And I think it's it's hard because I'm sure there's a lot of jobs that room for absence doesn't really exist. But I think also like allowing people to recognize like, okay, so they were out of the office there, they called in because they have diabetes and they had a really rough night. Well, a very good example I'll tag on to is at the, the grocery store, they asked if I could switch shifts. And I said, respectfully, no, I'm not going to because I have a hard enough time sleeping as it is. So if you have me come in, you know, a third shift one night and then the first shift a day or two later, I won't sleep well. It'll affect my blood sugar. It'll affect everything. And they were great about it. Oh, okay. No problem. We're just asking. Yeah. No. Yeah. Because I mean, if you have a low blood sugar and you're at work too, and nobody knows, and it's like, nobody knows. And now here's Dolby just laying on the floor. Twitching. <laughs> nobody knows what's going on. Turning purple. <laughs> People going to the cash register, helping themselves. Mm -hmm. No, but yeah. I actually, I found some statistics on it. Let's hear the statistics. They don't lie. Okay. We might fib a little bit and twist the truth, but statistics don't lie. Let it rip. Oh, I forget which source this was from. But basically, I'm, I'm not owning credibility to this. This was from a source I found online. <laughs> Workplace discrimination discrimination not discrimination discrimination sorry discrimination. okay so 19 percent of people with diabetes were disciplined for needing time off mm, that should be against the law I, I really think that i'm not one of those too happy people but that's one too it's like we can't help that right isn't that crazy 19 percent of people with diabetes are disciplined so like doby you are not going to get half your paycheck because you asked for time off. But don't you think we, we have to think about that as people with diabetes when we look for a job? Sometimes you need to work, you need a job. It's like, you know what, that might not be the best career choice for me because yeah, I, I get that they need people there. The next one was 25%. So a quarter were questioned about their time off for their quote unquote illnesses. Mm. So like, well, what are you sick with? which I think is crazy. Cause it's like, if you're sick and they know you're diabetic, why are you asking me anymore? I think that's kind of guilt by association because so many people abuse that, that, that are, don't have diabetes, mm -hmm. that we get roped into it. It's like, you know, there's always the one that ruins it for everybody and we get the trick bag passed to us in, in that instance. Yeah. Not fair, but who said life was fair? And then the other last statistic I found was that 12% were not allowed time off at all. Again, I'm going with the suit. Get a, get a lawyer. Yeah. That's not right. No. So, Adobe, have you ever had an experience where, like, you just weren't feeling your best and you were going on for a comedy show or you had booked a gig? It is an excellent point that you bring up, Sammy, as usual. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot because I don't think people realize any entertainer, if you're on the road and that's your life, 
you don't realize how hard it is to get to that particular show. Sometimes the next town is 100 miles over and you can drive. Other times it's 1,000 or 2,000 miles and you've traveled all day to get there. And just by the time you hit the stage, you've been up for 12, 14, 16 hours. You haven't eaten properly, blah, blah, blah. And as I find myself getting older, I used to just be able to plow through it and then crash after the show. I'm only on stage for 45 minutes to an hour maximum. But now it's to the point where I really have to watch that beforehand yeah. because I'll, I'll just, I'll be up on stage. I find myself, I forgot my act. Mm-hmm. You've never seen me before. I'm pretty high energy on stage. People say, man, you're so laid back off stage, but I just want to give the people a good show. Yeah. And as I get older, it's like, I can definitely feel I'm having a bad blood sugar day. Yeah. I think it, it's crazy too. Like even when we do the podcast, sometimes my blood sugars are really high and it's, I, I it's fine. Cause I'm like, I'm ready to rock and roll, but I'll even notice like, I'm not probably as like, on or sharp or like lively because my blood sugars are higher it's kind of frustrating because it's like you can either postpone stuff because your blood sugar or you just you know roll with the punches and you just go well at least at least you know you're known that you're finding it out a lot sooner than i did yeah you know now, that now since i'm back on the exercise kick since we're doing this show uh it is fun to me to be able to predict now okay my mind is sharper because i exercise i'm eating better i'm thinking better so it's better all around so as you improve yourself hopefully with our help here in part of the community, it'll improve your job relationship as well. The Diabetes app is an online community platform that was created to help people living with diabetes find support and information in one spot. And on the Diabetes app, you can join groups and connect with other people all over the world who are also living with diabetes. I mean, for me, whenever I have a bad day, I find myself scrolling through the mental wellness group just to reassure myself that I'm not alone. The Diabetes app has a resource section where you can find articles, recipes, tips, and tricks for managing your diabetes. Download the Diabetes app today and connect with us right on the app. DieStrong is an online telehealth platform that connects you to medical and holistic professionals to help you manage your diabetes. Find registered dietitians, nutritionists, certified diabetes educators, and more without the hassle of having to go into a doctor's office. Wait, 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 wait. You mean a lazy bum like me can have appointments right from my computer? Sign me up. That's right, Doby. And this week, our listeners can use promo code JMT25 for 25% off their first visit. Yeah, don't try to cheat and go to JMT26 because you're not going to get 26. It's 25. Go to www.diastronghealth.com. That's www.diastronghealth.com. So, Sammy, what can people do to prepare themselves for a work situation to let everybody know that they have diabetes and we're on the same page? Okay. So, are you ready for me to ramble? Get ready to ramble. Yes. Let it ramble. What else is new? So, preparing for diabetes at work. This is just some things I thought about. I found some people, other people recommended this. So number one, you bring your backup snacks. Like kind of how you said, Dobie, and you're on the road and you're like, "Uh uh-oh, you don't have your snacks. And then you're kind of screwed. And you're like, oh, now it becomes a bigger ordeal because now you have to ask everybody to pull over or just stop. Or, oh, actually, like you get to the place that you're going to do your comedy show. And now you're like, I got to go find an apple. It can be complicated. Well, especially if you're on a plane. I mean, you know, you're in an airport. Boy, I need an apple. Uh, $47. I'll put a down payment on a... Literally. It's crazy. Yeah. Number two, you want to bring your backup materials. As in uh, like test strips? Mm-hmm. Like for you, if you were still on your insulin, you would want to make sure you had a backup pen and a backup needles. Mm-hmm. Because you're like, okay, if I'm at work right now and um something happens, like I went to that concert one time and my pump failed. Well, I should have brought in another one. So like if you're at work and you're in a very important day and you don't have time and you live an hour away, you're commuting and you're like, oh my gosh, my insulin just ran That's out. not going to work. That's why I think it's so important that everybody else knows that. Mm-hmm. And you say, okay, look, if I, if I pass out, if I'm on the floor... Here, it's in this top drawer right here. Help me out. Please don't let me die. Yeah, exactly. The other one is, I think, having a diabetic buddy. So a diabetic, which is exactly like what you just said about people knowing. But even if like, Mm -hmm. I think some people are obviously more shy and timid about it. And I think if that's the case, then maybe confide in one person and make sure that's your one person that knows. And obviously, you don't want to put too much stress on them. So they're like, "Uh oh, it's all on me. But just so that somebody's aware. Well, I mean, I I still think, and I don't know how we can stress it anymore, but there is no shame in admitting to anybody. You have type 1, type 2, gestational, however form, pre-diabetic. There's no shame in it, but just let it rip. This is what I have. This is what I need to do. And that's it. Exactly. I think people are pretty accommodating, yeah. don't you think, as a rule? No, 1,000%. The next one I was going to say is like, I, and I haven't ever experienced this, but 
I don't know. I don't know how often this is, but a lot of times people I talk to are like, oh yeah, my work today, they brought in donuts and cookies. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So like on the, yeah. in the, I don't, what is that called? Not like the meeting room, but like the lunch room. I don't know. The break room. Yeah. There we go. Break room. Thank you. And as much as I want to be like, you can eat whatever you want. Like the OG doctors are like, you can eat whatever you want, honey. You just have to take insulin. Okay. But let's be honest, just fight the food temptation. Because if you are in an important work meeting or work call and you're 350 because you wanted the donuts, it's just going to suck. Like it's just literally going to suck. It's going to spiral. Whatever little pleasure that you have, yeah, it'll spiral into a, a so flaming... Like just fight the food temptation, you know? But okay, don't you think though that there has to be some substitutes, like you say, you know, something healthy that you have and say, hey, you enjoy your donut. And I'm going to enjoy my carrots. My carrots. <laughs> yeah. My kale, my whatever I eat. A thousand percent. I totally agree with you. But there takes some effort there. It takes some planning and it's not much, but a lot of people just don't do it. I'll plead guilty to that. I mean, I, I'll plead guilty as well because I don't always. I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. And then I get somewhere and I'm like, mm. Yeah, but I think, like, I think sometimes, and I know it was in my workplace that I had, that they would bring in the donuts on a certain day. You know when it's going to be there. You know that everybody's going to be mm-hmm. smacking their lips and eating it. So either you, you come in a little later, you take a break. There's ways to work around it so it's not a huge temptation to. Agreed. That's an excellent point, Doby. And I'm glad that you've had an experience with but that. But you know, the human animal, we're right there. Well, one donut's not going to hurt. Next thing you know, you have nine more. Mm-hmm. And there's the little little birds floating around your head. And there's your eyes are like crosses, like in the cartoons. And you need to call an ambulance. Yep, exactly. We're all human, baby. Yeah. I even think sometimes what's good, too, is something else to be prepared about. I think it's like, in general, with the workplace... I don't know. I think there's some jobs and if you have an understanding boss, maybe, but making time to move, even if that's like 10 minutes, mm-hmm. like you're like, hey, there's a lunch break. Like I'm diabetic. I have to go move for like 10 minutes just to get moving or walk around the office or do like chair squats from your desk, like something. Mm-hmm. I agree with that I, I wholeheartedly. Yeah. Or even like a standing desk. I actually think that's great. I have one right now. I'm not standing there, so I'm kind of abusing it, but <laughs> it's a standing desk. And even if you like are standing, but you're moving your feet right to left, right to left. You're just getting the body moving. Yeah, but would you not agree? It's it's like shaking one of those little those little snow globes. When you get your moving for 10 minutes, it, it, it refreshes you. It sharpens your mind. It gets you ready for the rest of your shift, however long it could be. I like that analogy, like the little snow globe when you shake Those it. little snow globes. I know you live in California, but you see those one. things. It's from Heidelberg. My friend got it for me. Okay. Well, they're, they're in Wisconsin. We have them here all the time. And it's like, I think that's very much what you do with your whole... Uh, I don't want to say blood system, but your whole Mm -hmm. body, your whole human experience. You move a little bit, 10 minutes, shake it up. You got three more hours to go. You can make it through. You won't have a blood sugar high or low, probably. Mm -hmm. And everybody's happier, including you. 1,000%. Like 1,000%. So little tips make big tips. Little tips make big tips. Seriously, yes. you know, so, so you're not you're not angry and having a seizure and a fit and a throwing up. Saying, okay, I feel good. Ten minutes later, it just it changes your whole world. Yeah, a crabosaurus. Well, sometimes I think another one too is like so that you're aware of it too is like because you can be so on the go and like making the time is also like if you made the time during the day, you're like, okay, this is my time to move, whatever. But then you go back to work, and if you're somebody who like dives so far in that you like don't you forget like oh I need to check my blood sugars, like maybe set an alarm. On your phone. Oh, great idea. Yeah, that's a great idea. You know, mm-hmm. like timers, like, hey, I ate this at lunch and I moved, but I know I'm going to be in work calls till three. So maybe I should check, you know, like setting an alarm. Yeah. Just so you don't forget. No, I like that. Because I'm the queen of forgetting. You know, in theory and reality are two different things. They say in theory, it takes 21 days to create a habit. In, in theory, it takes 90 days to create a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's more than that because we ah, I'll, I'll, I'll check it. I'll do it tomorrow. I think, like you said, set an alarm. And get the word out that you're doing it so everybody else calls you on it. So, And then if you're having a bad day, you can go back to our episode on playing the D card and use it to your advantage. <laughs> you know? I finally, finally set an alarm for me to take my 24-hour insulin at 8.35 at night every time that goes off. But it took me forever to set that alarm. That's my point. And you had it since you were a kid. So yes. if you are an example, I don't think there's anybody listening. It's like, hey, hey you're human. We get that. That's why it we're here. eight years, Doby. Eight years? me eight years to do that well, i'll be dead in eight years so i'll enjoy uh, the fruits of it now. no goodbye no you won't be in a tongue-operated wheelchair doing the podcast with you <laughs> no another one is <laughs> expect emergencies and what to do in case of one maybe have a sticky note that has emergency contacts for anybody that's around have your glucagon pen which is an emergency pen if you go too low somebody just mm-hmm. stabs you with it <laughs> Well, there was a situation that I had with with an ex coworker, and he had the situation where he was 
hyper and hypo, they put the wrong medicine in them. So you might want to have a little, I am type one diabetic, just a little background. Yeah. You know, if, if you find me passed out, I am this. Like a blurb. A blurb. That's a good word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also think, I don't know how you feel about this, but something as far as like, these aren't like tips, but like working in the workforce, workplace, whatever you want to call it. I think there's pros and cons to even like working specifically like with any any disease, working with the disease, like a, a disease-based company that you have the same disease. Hmm. I think there's pros and cons. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? No, please elaborate on that. So if okay. we, so we work for a diabetic company, for example, but none of our pod squad, they're all they're all healthy. They're all normal. Yes, they're they're all normal. Elizabeth and Zach are back in Canada munching on pure sugar cane yeah, right now, so flipping us off. <laughs> so but no, but like I wasn't making sense. I have diabetes and I'm working for a diabetes company. Mm-hmm. I think there's pros and cons to working for a company that you also have the disease. Because I think the con of it is that you can become like almost like over consumed. Okay. Yeah, I see that. You know what I'm saying? Because you deal with it already 24 7. And it's so great because like it's the best thing ever working for a company that you have the disease and you love the disease. Like I, I love diabetes, even though I hate it, but I love it. But yet, like on those diabetes burnout days, it's like so hard because you're like, oh, I'm having a burnout day, but then I'm working for diabetes. Yeah, well, I think a a pro is our staff is great here. We joke about it all the time, but they're fantastic. And they don't have diabetes. They know more about it than I know I do. You know, I see the memos. I look at all this like, wow, these guys are really diving into it. So I would trust more talking to, you know, someone like Elizabeth, our queen bee producer, Mm -hmm. than some people on the street that have it. 1,000%. Yeah, we're around it all the time. So we're pretty lucky in a way. That's why we want, we want to share the community with you. So when you go to your job, it's like, hey, you know, I'm not a freak, even though I get treated that way. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I just, I'm a regular person. This is part of my life. Just as everybody's got their own quirks, things, offshoots about their lives. Diabetes is a big one for millions of people worldwide. Yes. No, really. And so I think that's like something that's always interesting because I've always thought that like, I guess it could be overwhelming, but it's really cool. And when you have an awesome team like we do, they're very understanding. And I think there's just, it's really difficult when whatever company you're working for does not. And at the end of the day, I think almost like every company should have like a little like medical like seminar or like a webinar where it's like they get like the lowdown on every most popular popular disease. That's a really good idea. You know? Like where like they come in once a month or once every six months and somebody comes in and talks about like diabetes, maybe like high blood pressure, hypertension, and I don't know, like whatever. I had a woman I work with, uh, it was a cancer survivor and she was a a little older and she could only work a certain amount of hours. And she was a wonderful person and a wonderful worker. And uh, we had a new assistant manager came in and asked her, hey, can you stay late? And she said no. And the assistant manager got upset. Oh, you can't take one for the team. No, I'm recovering from cancer, yeah, like a major what? disease. And, and the, the chemo had made her tired. Yeah, it makes you extremely tired. And I think just like, you know, low blood sugar day, the same thing. And it's just, I, I didn't enjoy or appreciate the attitude no. that the manager had. And, I, you know, I'm not naming the store or the manager or anything like that, but it's just the human interaction yep. that, uh, you know, I think needed to be cleaned up a little bit. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, here. exactly. I agree with you. Well, Doby, this was a great chat. Yes, it was a great chat. Like this it. is what we're doing. Hopefully, as you're on your walk and you're listening to us, that's what we do. We chat. Or if you're on your way to work, no pun intended. On your way to work. Uh, yes, exactly. Don't go into a flip out on your boss to say, hey, you know, I love listening to Sammy Doby today. They gave me some tips, some hints. I have rights. We have rights. <laughs> I have rights in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Don't call me man, my diet buddy. Look. But what's the question of the pod today, Doby? What do you do for a living? Yes, or are you a student? I mean, you're a student. Well, that's uh, that's living, and that that is an occupation yeah. when you're a student. That's totally acceptable. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to learn about you. We would love to interact with you. So how can we do that, Sam? If somebody wants to contact us, how can they do that? First off, please give us a five-star rating interview because it gets our community together and chatting and an open discussion. Um, but you can find us on Instagram, Twitter. Twitter, Twitter, and You're TikTok. on the Twitter. We're on the Twitter, kids. And our hashtag is just my type pod. And please answer the question of the pod and give us your feedback. We love to hear it. We love to hear everything, Sammy. We're going to put the cherry on the Sunday today. We'll be back for more. Go listen to some of our past episodes. If you're new, we love having you and catch up to speed. And we'll move forward as a team. But first, let's wrap this one up, kid. Say la vie, baby. This is the just my type 
Podcast.